We all like a good modification, some more than others, of course. We've got one just here, this wonderful Tokyo neon sign by, by Davy at Stumblor Pinball. It's an absolute beauty, one of the most successful modifications of recent times, I think it's fair to say. This just really improves the aesthetics and the beauty of the game. Uh, some mods, however, are a little bit more functional, maybe like the helipad on top of the collapsing building on on the Godzilla here. This premium version, the building collapses on multiball and the balls um, are locked up the top. Unfortunately, there's a glitch in the game where they go straight down the middle, certainly on my game and a few others that I've seen. That's a nice little modification, puts them to the left flipper where I think is where they were meant to be. There are others that are um, on the other side, the dark side of the play field, if you want. Like these flipper calling fans, which not only did I not know I needed, I wasn't even entirely sure why we needed them, but it's since been explained to me uh, by Spencer, who is holding the camera at the moment, who's going to demonstrate how to install them. They're very quick, they're very simple, very easy to install, but I've since been educated on why we need them. Now, the longer you play a game for, the hotter the flipper coils become. The hotter the flipper coils for coils become, which is easy for me to say, the less powerful they are. So a shot at the start of the game, when you first fire the game up, you might be hitting a ramp consistently. The longer the ball is in play for, the longer the machine switched on, the more times you've hit the flipper button, the coil will heat up and it will lose power. So basically you don't have consistency of shots. Now this happens more than ever now, and there's a very, very simple reason for that. And that is because the coils that you get in these modern machines are just not as good as the old Bally Williams ones. Two reasons on that. Number one, they were double wound on the Bally Williams, but what we've also done, uh, with the help of a few people uh, in the pinball industry, we've actually weighed the amount of copper, the amount of windings that there are in a modern day flipper coil compared to a Bally Williams. It varies slightly, but you're looking at about 28 grams less copper in a modern coil than you'd get in an old one. That's a lot of thin copper windings, it really is. And by having a lesser amount of copper, it means that the flipper coils heat up a lot quicker. Now this is more of a problem that's prevalent on modern games because the game code's deeper, the rules are deeper. Doesn't matter so much on a fish tails, you know, the game's over pretty damn quickly. By, by the time the, the flipper coils have heated up, your game's over. On these modern games with the deep rule set, particularly a game like this, Godzilla or Avengers Infinity Quest or any of those, you're really going to notice a dip in performance. So in short, if you've dialed a shot in, that shot may not be at the same point at the flipper that it is 20 minutes later. Um, I, I put it into context, my longest game on this particular one has been about 20 minutes, half an hour. But they do start losing power pretty quickly. So these particular flipper coil fans have been designed by Wayne. The link is in the description below where you can get them from. Um, Wayne is, well, Wayne's a fantastic and absolutely brilliant uh, pinball player. There are some other pinball fans, that are flipper fans that are on the market. These are better, and I'll tell you why these are better, because these are more direct. These attach directly to the coil, rather than, there's a couple that I've seen that sort of blow, blow air in the general direction. This is a very, very much a dedicated fan. We're gonna show you how to install them now. It's quick, it's easy, and I think you'll find, if you get them, you'll notice a difference straight away. Let's have a little look at what's in the box. Well, first of all, we've got a comprehensive set of instructions, which is always important. Next, we've got the fans themselves. Now, these are made up of two metal heat sinks with fans on the back that are held in these rather nice 3D printed enclosures. And they go through to a single cable. Then we've got some 3D printed clips that will help keep the heat sinks and fans attached to our flipper coils. We've got some very handy cable ties. and We all know that I love a cable tie. And last but not least, we've got the power cable itself. So without further ado, we will go and fit these. But before we do, we better power down the machine, remove the lock bar, and uh, take the glass out. Right, Spencer's getting ready to uh, fit them. So this is a three flipper game. Spencer, we're only fitting these on the two 
front primary flipper coils. Yep, that's these two chaps here, left and right, or actually, yes, left and right, still left and right. Even though the table's up, I had to think about that for a moment. Yep, still left and right. Now, you've got your instructions there. Mm -hmm. uh, do you just want to start fitting them, taking it? As I understand it, you've got to take these stop ends off, uh, first of all, to get the clips in, right? Yeah, for anybody that doesn't know what the stop end is, this plate on the back of the uh, flipper Show coil the ones of the camera. There you go. is called a stop end, and it's held on by these two bolts. And what we will do is we will undo those And that will release the stop end and allow us to put the clips that we need to use underneath. I do find it quite ridiculous, Spencer, that there's cost cutting to such an extent. Because let's be fair, you know, 30 odd grams of copper is not expensive when placed against the price of a, a pinball machine which costs thousands and thousands and thousands. It would have been so much easier just to put some decent coils in there. Well, I think it speaks volumes, really, that the old Bally Williams used to have a dual coil on there. There was a, a circuit on there for actuating the coil, and then was a secondary, much lower power circuit for holding the coil on. So I'm just gonna slip that underneath there, and then pop that plate back on. That goes back on there like that. Um, and that meant that the coil itself would draw a lot of power when you were actually actuating. It's the flip itself would draw a fair amount of power. But if you needed to hold the coil, it would hold on much less power. But these... Oh, what you mean if you held it up in an upright position to trap yeah, a ball? Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you're trapping a ball, and, and a lot of a lot of people, I mean, you know, most of the players that we that we see, I mean, you do it, I do it, everybody does it. We are constantly trapping a ball, looking at our next shot, eyeing up what we're going for next. I think you've made us sound far better than we are. Che checking to see which <laughs> shot we're going for, or even or even having a little break and uh, and uh, having a sip of coffee or something. But um, we do a lot of flipper traps, and holding these for a long period on full power can't be good. And that's probably why we're getting all these overheats. And I firmly believe that if it was good enough for Bally and Williams, it should be good enough for these guys as well. So that is the first of our clips on the coil. Now it's quite a tight fit in there. It does move ever so slightly. There's a little bit of wiggle room there. So that's now in the middle. Right, we'll do the second one and we'll be back when it's done. One thing I did notice when Spencer was trying to fit both of the clips, there was a lot more resistance for the clip on the left-hand side than on the right-hand side. And we've worked out why it is. They're actually different size coils. We, that's the first thing we notice. Then you'll actually see, if you look at them, they're completely different coils. So the one on the right is significantly smaller. Now, I don't know if that's meant to be that. I'm sure somebody will tell me in the comments, but they're just different flipper coils, basically. As you can see, I fitted this one already, and I'm just gonna go through with you this second coil. Now, I've done these wires facing forwards because we're gonna track the wires up to this wiring loom up here, so I've faced them forward. But what you do is you take your coil and you place it on your flipper coil like that, and you put the first clip in, and then what you do is you squeeze the bulb on the back there, and you'll see that the clip goes in. So Spence, you're about to attach those wires to the existing loom. I tell you, you're gonna sort of run them around down yeah. and under there. So what do you think about these different sized coils then? Because clearly it's meant to be that way. I just don't understand why they wouldn't put all the same coils on. No, it's it's a bit of a head scratch, I'll be honest. Um, I don't know that there's a huge amount of advantage in having potentially three different sized coils because that one is definitely different to that one. And I think 
There's our upper flipper. Yeah. That's a different coil again, which means even though you have the ability to control the power of a coil through the menu system, they've chosen to use three different sized coils on three different flippers on the same machine, which does seem like a false economy, especially given that now, if this was my machine and I wanted to keep some spare coils, I'd have three types of coil rather than one spare coil. If I have a coil burnout, sod's law, it's gonna be the one I haven't got. As you can see, here are our cables coming out the front of our fans and I've cable tied them onto the existing loom and it comes through to this lovely socket here. Now this is our power socket. What I'm going to do is attach this power extender, which comes with the kit, and then start to route that all the way through the wiring loom. And we're going to track it all the way down through here. And then I will probably go down that way to join with the rest of the loom, bring it down to the front, and end up down here on this board. This is the cable that we've routed all the way through the wiring loom and it's terminated at the front of the machine by the tilt bob. And we're going to be connecting it to this board. Now, as you can see, what we need is an adapter, but fortunately we've got one. Now this ships with the kit and it allows the power extender cable to go through to this handy connector. Now this connector goes onto this board and it goes to the pins that are marked CN Charlie November 2. Now the pin connector has got two little lugs on it which means it corresponds with this bit of the connector which means it's impossible to put it in the wrong way round. Now this one here is CN2 and I've checked it and then I double checked it and then I put my reading glasses on and I checked it again because you don't really want to plug it into the wrong one. So here goes, that goes on and it just slips into place there and it's just nice and snug. And that's it, that's installed. And that is the end of the installation. Now Spencer's done all of his stuff. Curiosity did get the better of me. I did actually just test. Now you've got to remember, these are very, very quiet fans. So I actually did, I took them apart again and I actually listened while it was switched on and they absolutely are working. It is undoubtedly blowing cold air onto the fans, unlike myself and Spencer, who have been blowing a load of hot air on this channel for quite some time. Uh, anyway, if you'd like to purchase a set of these i'll put a link in the description below let you know where you can go to get them i think the only thing to do now is have such an epic game on godzilla that i truly feel the benefit of my super cooled flipper coils